Today I'm going to be showing you how you can build your own crack the code game in which you use a dial to guess the randomly generated code to the safe. Eight LEDs on the front of the safe tell you how many of the digits you've guessed are correct and how many digits are in the right place as well. There have been a number of different forms of this game over the years, from physical pegboards in the 70s to computer based games and more recently you may have seen these type of puzzles as single images on social media platforms. In this case, I've used an Arduino to run the game inside a wooden safe box. The safe is initially open, allowing you to put something into the inside compartment. You then push the dial to lock the safe using a servo on the inside of the door. You then need to input the code by turning the dial to select the digits and pushing the dial to confirm each digit. After your fourth digit is chosen, the safe displays how many of your digits are correct and how many are in the correct place using the red and green LEDs on the door. A red LED indicates the correct digit and a green LED indicates that it's also in the correct place. So you're looking to light up all four red LEDs and all four green LEDs in order to crack the code and open the safe. The safe keeps track of how many guesses you've made in order to crack the code. It may sound complicated at first, but it's actually not that difficult. You just need to remember and build upon your previous guesses. Most of the time you should be able to crack the code in 5 to 10 guesses, depending on how lucky your initial guesses are. I designed the safe box in Inkscape to be cut from 3mm MDF. You can also cut the parts from 3mm acrylic or plywood. There are 6 panels which make up the outside of the box. The back and front have cutouts in them for the door at the front and the cover for the electronics at the back. The dial is also made up from laser cut pieces which are then glued together. There are three decorative panels which are stuck to the top and two sides of the box to make it look more like a safe. There are also two panels which make up the door and a divider panel which goes into the middle of the box to separate the safe compartment from the electronics compartment. The pieces fit onto a single piece of MDF 400 by 500 mm and can be divided up into smaller pieces if needed. If you don't have access to a laser cutter, there are a number of online laser cutting services available who can cut the pieces for you and ship them to your door. Let's get started and cut out the pieces. I used some masking tape over the wood to prevent the smoke from the laser from marking the wood. I have to take this off before gluing the box together. I started out gluing the decorative panels to the top and sides first. Make sure that you've got the pieces in the correct order so that you know which ones are which. There are three different pieces, with the top and bottom being the same, the sides being the same, and the front and back being the same. Once the panels are dry, I assembled the box. Make sure that the cutouts for the center divider are on the sides. These are to run any wires from the front of the box to the back of the box with Arduino and battery sit. The hinges are also laser cut and just glued into place once you've lined up the door. Make sure that they're parallel to the door or you'll have difficulty opening it. Glue the four squares into the corners behind the back panel to hold the screws in place for the back cover. You may also need to sand a little bit off the inside hinged edge of the door so that it doesn't rub on the edge of the box as it moves past it. 
I then drilled holes for the screws and started mounting the screen, the Arduino, the back cover and lastly the encoder. Now let's have a look at the electronics. We've got 8 LEDs connected to the digital I.O. pins 6 to 13, the locking servo connected to pin 5, the encoder connected to pins 2, 3 and 4, and the OLED display connected to the Arduino's I to C interface. I used a 220 ohm resistor for each LED and I connected the components together using coloured ribbon cable. This was to keep the wiring neat and to help keep track of which wire needed to go to each Arduino pin. I also mounted a power switch onto the back cover and connected this to a battery plug to connect to a rechargeable battery to power the game. Lastly, you'll need to position the locking servo towards the edge of the door so that it passes over the lip in the box and the arm is able to push up against the inside of the lip to lock the box. This isn't the strongest locking mechanism but it really is simple and it works for the game's purpose. Now let's have a look at the code. I'm not going to go through the code in as much detail as usual as there's quite a lot to it. I've done a detailed write-up explaining each part of it which you can find along with the code download through the link in the video description. We start by importing the libraries to control the OLED display and the server. We then set the parameters for the display and create all of our variables. There are quite a few variables dedicated to tracking the encoder turns as these are done through the rising edge interrupts on pins 2 and 3. There are two code arrays created. One to store the randomly generated code, and one to store the user's current guess. In the setup function, we start the display, attach the servo, set the IO pin modes, and then display the crack the code text animation on the display. The loop function flashes the LEDs, and then displays the message push to lock safe, which then waits until the user pushes the dial to start the game. The same code is run at the end of the game, which then displays the number of attempts, and waits for the dial push to start a new game. There is some debouncing code on the encoder push button, and once pushed the servo locks the safe and a random code is generated. The code then calls a function to ask the user to input their guess, and then another to check the guess. This is repeated until the user guesses the code correctly. There is a function to update the code being displayed, which is called every time the encoder is turned and the displayed code needs to change. The function to generate a new code simply assigns a new random digit to each of the four elements in the code array. The function to input a code guess allows the user to select a digit using the encoder and then confirm each digit input by pushing the encoder down. The check code guess function then looks through the guessed code and decides how many digits are correct and how many are in the correct place. There's more code to the logic behind the digits in the incorrect place so that duplicates in the user's input and in the generated code are managed. So if the user guesses 5555 and the code contains 15, then only one of the red LEDs will light up. The same goes for the user guessing a single 5 in their code, while the generated code contains two 5s. Only one red LED will light up. The update LEDs function switches the correct number of red and green LEDs on, based on the user's guess. The startup any function displays the crack the code animation on startup. Lastly, two interrupt functions manage the input from the encoder, one incrementing the digit upwards when turned clockwise, and one downwards when turned anti-clockwise. Let's upload the code and try it out. The guessed code is input using the dial to increment the digits, 
and a push on the dial to go to the next digit will confirm the code once all four digits are selected. The LEDs on the front then light up to tell us what was correct in our guess. In this case, we can see that we got two digits correct by the red LEDs, and that one of them was in the correct place by the green LED. Let's play a game and see if we can crack the code. The safe is initially unlocked, allowing you to put something inside it. We then push the dial to lock the safe and generate a new code. Now let's see if we can figure the code out. There are a couple of different ways to do this, but I'm just going to go through a logical step-by-step -step sequence starting with all ones. We get no LEDs lighting up with all ones, so now we know that there are no ones in the code, so let's try all twos. So we get one two and it's shown up in the correct place, so we know that there's a two in the code, but we don't yet know where. Let's try the first position and guess the remaining digits as threes. You can see that we now only have one red LED lighting up, so we know that the two is not in the right place and there are no threes in the code. Let's move the two and try fours. We got an extra red LED this time and the green one is back, meaning that there's definitely a four in the code as well. Let's keep the four and the two and try two fives at the end. We've got another red LED this time, so we know that there's a 5 in the code as well. We now just need to find the last digit and get the order correct. Let's try 4257. Now we've got the last red LED on, so we know all of the digits in the code, we just need to get the order correct. The green LEDs tell us that two digits are in the correct place. Now I've kept the 4 and the 2 in the same place so it's easier to follow and I'm not changing too many things at once. But from the time we identified the 4 in the code, I should have been switching the 2 and 4 around as well, as we only got one green LED on, which indicated that one of them was in the incorrect place as well. Since we haven't really kept track of the orders of the digits, we can just try a couple of combinations until we get the order correct, remembering that either the 4 or the 2 was correct in our early guesses. We finally cracked the code in 9 attempts, and the safe is now unlocked again. Let's look at one more example code, this time one which had a repeated digit. We start off again with all 1s. We can see that our code has a single 1 in it. Now let's try 1, 2, 2, 2. We can see that there are no twos in the code, but that the one is also not in the correct place. So let's move the one and try threes. We now found that the one is in the correct place, but there are no threes. I then repeated the code using fours, fives, sixes and sevens, but didn't find any additional digits. So we now only have eights, nines and zeros left. Let's try eights next. We've got an extra two red LEDs and green LEDs, so we know that we've got two eights in the code. We now just need the last digits and to get the order correct, keeping in mind that we know that the one is in the correct place. Let's try a nine at the end. We didn't get any extra red LEDs, so there isn't a nine and we've lost the green LED, so there must be an eight in the last position. The last digit we can try is a zero. And we've cracked the code. It took a bit longer than usual this time because the digits were mostly high and we didn't start from zero. Enjoy building your own crack the code safe box. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.